Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm going to look at differential equations. This is following on from a series of videos I've done on differentiation and integration, so you might want to check those out first. I'm going to cover four questions today, exam style questions. Um, as ever, do grab a pen and paper, have a go yourself, pausing and rewinding as you need to work through at your own pace. Please do let me know if this is helpful, leave a comment, it's always lovely to hear from you. And if you want to get in touch to ask about online tuition or my masterclasses, you can email starfishmaths at gmail.com or check out the website starfishmaths.com or even find me on Instagram. Let's get started. So a differential equation is one where um, you've got an equation because it's an equal sign and you've got a dy by dx involved. So anytime you've got something like dy by dx equals 5, that's a very, very basic and simple differential equation and you can just integrate it to undo the dy by dx. Um, here, the type we're gonna look at today is when we've got um, something involving x and something involving y. Uh, so we need to separate those out before we can deal with it. So the way we're gonna approach it is to bring the dx onto this side and the y onto this side so that we can separate these things out and have the dx with the x bit and the y with the dy bit. So we're just going to cross multiply this one, bring the dx up onto that side and the y up onto that side. So we're going to cross multiply, you can do it in two separate steps or in one fell sweep if you're happy. So bring the y up and the dx up, we'll have y times by dy equals cos x times by dx. And I like to write the dx and the dy at the end of each line because then what we can do is just integrate both sides. So you can apply an integral sign to both sides like that. And then it's just a case of integrating both sides. So here we go, integrating y is, should be very straightforward. And integrating cos x, hopefully you know that's the sine x. Um, and then when you integrate without limits, you need your plus c. Um, you can argue that there'll be a, a constant on both sides, plus c and plus a different c, but um, obviously if you moved that constant onto this side, it, you still have a constant. So we can just put one c over on one side and that's fine. And that there is your general solution when you've got something in terms of y and x, so we've got rid of the dx and the dy's, that's your general solution. Now if you're given some more information and you're given um, a value of x and y, then you can go further and find a particular solution. Um, and that means you can use your x and y that you're given to find the constant. So let's try that. Let's say that y is 2 when x is 0. So that's going to be a, a new piece of information that we can apply to here. So we'll just pop that into the general solution to get a half times 2 squared equals sine 0 plus c and then solving that so we find that c is 2 and then if we put the 2 back here then that can now be called the particular solution and you can even go further if you want and make y the subject on its own and just rearrange it to get rid of the half and the squared so we can do that. And that is the particular solution to this differential equation. Okay, second question, and only slightly more complicated. Do you have a go at this? We're going to start the same way as the last one. We're going to separate the dy's and the dx's, get the dx with the x, the dy with the y. So it just needs a little bit of rearranging. So the way I'm going to do this is bring the dx up onto that side and swap that back down onto that side. So we're dividing and multiplying here. So that's the dy with the y bit and the dx with the x bit. And we can apply an integral on both sides. At the moment that looks a bit nasty to integrate so we can write the powers at the top. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Now let's integrate. So on this side we've got a bit of reverse chain rule, so adding one to the power, dividing by it, and then we also need to divide by the derivative of the inside bracket. 
make sure you've practiced reverse chain rule for that. I've got another and I've got another video if you need to look at it. And on this side it should be a more straightforward one. And we've got our plus C. That's our general solution. Um, I'm not going to tidy that up just now because let's have some more information and get a particular solution. So let's say that y is one and a half when x is minus two. So putting that in here, I've run out of space here, but that should be three over two on the left hand side equals a half plus c. So c is one. So just giving myself a bit more room here. I'll try and neaten this up. So we've got one over x plus one. And let's have a go at making y the subject. You don't have to, but it's a nice thing to do, or, you're, or you might be asked for it. So there was quite a bit to unpick there, but um, hopefully you arrived at that particular solution. Well done if you got that right. Okay, this question here I wanted to um, include this one because it's got a dy by dx on both sides. So it looks slightly different to the other two that we've just done. Uh, but I just wanted to show you it's this exact same. It's not really much more complicated at all. It just needs an extra first step of gathering up the dy by dx terms on one side. So let's try and do that. I've done it in one step, of course you can do it in more steps, but what I've done is subtracted that term over onto the left and then factorised. So when you pull dy by dx out as a common factor, um, then you've got something multiplied by it and that's a much more helpful form and looks like the other two questions that we've done. So we want to again gather the dy with the y bits, that's already there, and the dx with the x bits, so we just really want to pull that up onto that side. So let's carry on. And now we're in a good place to integrate. I also included in this question an exponential term just so you can practice again integrating e. Um, remember that you need to divide by the derivative of that function there. So that's why the 4 has halved to become 2. Great, that's the general solution. Um, I made this question up so I'm not going to bother giving more information for a particular solution on this one because the point I really wanted to make was just about when you've got that reoccurring, so hopefully that's clear. Okay, ending with a slightly more challenging question as always. This is a past exam um, question. Also, it's worth saying that a lot of exam questions involve an awful lot of words which I haven't included in these examples. Um, because I frankly don't have the space <laughs> on the whiteboard um, but it's just a case of pulling out the information that you need so this question um, we're given some initial conditions we're given um, that information to get the particular solution so that could be in a sentence written somewhere and you just need to pull it out um, and we've got a domain and a range and that's just because it's trigonometry and we need those but this question is really um, a test, a brutal test of integrating trigonometry so do you have a go it's a nice challenge for you starting off as usual again the dx with the x's and the dy with the y's so let's just do that so this is a really useful question to show you actually just because um, if you've not seen these before they're quite difficult to integrate but once you've seen it you'll know it in the future um, so integrating these you've got 1 over cos squared so hopefully you know that that's the same as sec squared and that is writing it in that form is much more helpful for an integration because hopefully you know there's a straightforward integral of that it's just tan um, and that's just a useful piece of information to know and to have that up your sleeve um, here you could write this, you might spot that's the same as 1 over tan. I'm not going to write it like that though because here's, here's the catch. If you're really sharp eyed you might spot cos is the derivative of sine and whenever you've got 
the derivative of the bottom on the top, that's actually a log. <laughs> that's an ln of the denominator. So, as I said, if you've not seen that before, hopefully that makes sense. But if you've not seen it before, it's very difficult to come up with that yourself. Well done if you did, but um, if not, just going forward, you've seen that now. That's a trick that could happen. Um, I've not integrated this side, have I? So that is the general solution. I'll put the plus C. Um, and now we can apply the other information. Okay, so hopefully you got that far. Um, I'm going to show you another trick though. <laughs> Always tricks. Um, this ln of a half. It's okay to do it like that, but if you're ever in a situation where um, an exam's asking you for a particular form to get it into a certain form, then this is something that you can do to manipulate this. Uh, a half is the same as 2 to the power of minus 1. Um, and then whenever you've got a log or something with a power, you can bring that power to the front. So, log of a half is the same as minus log of 2. Um, and that gives a nice easy solution here. So our constant is log of 2. So I'm just going to put it back here, um, back where I've got the general solution. I'm just going to put the log of 2 at the end and then that there is your particular solution. Good, well well done if you're getting those. As ever, um, if you need to rewind and have another go at some of those yourself, do. Otherwise, keep practicing lots of different questions. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.